Panama is capitalist democracy. That's a shit that can go on here. I mean, holy shit. Holy shit. Man, I just got ripped off. First was glory and now it's hell. Before the invasion, everything was nice. The worst thing they could do is to let the American go. They came in construction of the canal. And what was it like working with Americans? Oh man, they were beautiful, man. We have a crazy um, general controlling the country, Noriega. But down here, yeah, there's a lot of sicarios. A guy from the street robbed her and she's from the street too. I mean, sure. that's so crazy. Uh -huh. And there's no law and order. So the American came in and it make it better. No. Hell no, we're going to war. Te voy a decir porque yo trabajé con General Noriega. En serio? Sí. <laughs> can get stabbed by any crazy guy. Los policías son muy corruptos en Panamá. Están buscando dinero y ve a quién le pegan, a quién le meten preso. Are we in Southern California or Miami? This is the mayor of Panama City, bro. Actually more reasonable and cheaper for the U.S. to help out down here than to put an entire border wall in the U.S., which is doing, but it is founded in American culture. I don't fear about nothing. Anyone I fear about is gone. Yeah. That's it. As you can imagine, making content like this is actually a great risk to my personal safety. Not only that, but covering controversial topics like prostitution, like drug use, like living in the streets can oftentimes lead to these videos being demonetized. So I've decided to open up a new YouTube memberships page right on this main channel or my Patreon, either or. And what I'm going to offer in exchange is this OG Spain Malaga content. I've got five years of living in Spain, all this knowledge to offer you guys. I do miss making these old style vlogs. However, it's very niche based, so that's why I've decided to make this new community to compensate for the demonetized videos. So I'll leave the link in the description to both. Check it out if you want. Thank you so much for your support. All right, guys, back to Panama City. Behind me lie the 500 year old ruins of the first European Pacific settlement in all of the Americas, Panama Viejo. And well before the Panama Canal brought international recognition to this small isthmus nation that divides North and South America, well, there's a lot of crazy history right here. Now I think everybody who likes alcohol knows who Captain Henry Morgan was. He was just a bloke from Wales who came down here in the year of 1671 and literally obliterated the Spanish troops. And this is what remains of Panama Viejo. So let's get out of this ghost town and go to a place with a lot more action. A place that the Americans invaded in 1989 to get rid of the dictator and former CIA agent, Comandante Manuel Noriega. This should be a fun one. Let's go. Si yo como gringo me meto por el chorrio, todo saldrá bien? No. 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 ¿Por qué? Depende de la zona. Depende de la zona. Depende de la zona. Depende de la zona. Pero busco un contacto allí que me cuida y no pasa nada. Hábleme claro, hábleme claro. Hay pistolas y todo, ok. Hey, no, 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 no. Hey, Mari, Mari. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh it's getting crazy. <laughs> Honduras. Bien, Estados Unidos. ¿Qué les parece este ciudad de Panamá? Muy bonito, muy cultural. Y hace mucho calor. Sí. ¿Ustedes son de San Tegucigalpa? Tegucigalpa. Ay, la capital, la capital. So this is the founder of Panama City, Pedro Arias de Avila. What's interesting is they haven't vandalized or knocked the statue down because, as we've seen in Latin America, a lot of them reject the Spanish history. But anyways, what's interesting is that the national beer of Panama, Balboa, was from a Spanish conquistador, the one who discovered the Pacific Ocean, Nunez de Balboa. There's a metro stop in Madrid of that conquistador, or named after him. And so, yeah, like this guy did not like Balboa and he executed him and he took credit kind of for that Pacific exploration. Wasn't a good guy like most of them, but yeah, interesting history. 
¿Cuánto vale esto? Este te lo puedo dar 100 dólares. 100 dólares, wow. ¿Y recién pillado esta mañana? Sí. Qué bueno. En de Panamá, uh, 43, right here. Venga, It's actually quite clean. It's nice and wet. Last Monday I came here and they were doing a huge cleaning. So like it was closed, but it, they were just spraying that down. The people who worked here were absolutely soaked, but at least you know what you're getting is a bit uh, clean. And I have to say this, I've never gotten sick in Latin America except for Mexico. Montezuma's revenge. But uh, I want to go out and eat on the street where there's more action. Chico, estamos bien. Dando una botica, vale. Vale. Tengo pardo por ir al doctor y si va. So yeah, the people here, um, actually in Panama, besides right here. Ya vengo, ya vengo. Actually, they are really relaxed and they don't bother you. To be honest, it's a really nice place to visit. Oof, that looks dirty as hell. In fact, this whole area, this whole causeway here, is super smelling, polluted. It smells like. To be honest yeah this is where they unload the fish sort it bring it to the market process it and sell it buenas como es un día laboral para ustedes eh, cuántas horas ocho horas. ocho horas en el sol sí. trabajo es un buen trabajo no como es bueno un trabajo normal como cualquiera diariamente sabemos voy al chorrío Ah, vaya por para mi casa, ahí al chorrillo. Usted vive en el chorrillo. Estoy buscando un contacto neutro para que no tenga problemas, porque no quiero problemas, pero quiero enseñar cómo viven los panameños en este barrio. ¿Verdad? Pero yo no busco problemas, así no, no, que... No, estamos claros, claro, usted sí. va a su puesto, no hay nadie sí. que va a meter, usted va a su puesto, hay nadie, ni, ni nadie se mete con usted, ni lo malo. Nosotros no queremos problemas con, con la policía de turismo, como vive la gente, la balacera, la pandilla, todo eso va a haber ahí. Bueno, mi familia, mi, mi, mis abuelos, pues, vinieron de la isla de Martinica para los tiempos que estaban dando trabajo que estaban explotando el canal. Durante la invasión americana, ¿usted vivió algo duro? ¿Cómo no? Cuando invadieron Panamá y de Coiba me sacaron en un chino doble hélice los gringos porque ellos decían que como nosotros teníamos 18 años en ese tiempo, ellos decían que nosotros éramos menores de edad y que nosotros no podíamos estar ahí en la isla penal de Coiba. So we have French descendants, Afro-Caribbean descendants, indigenous, Spanish, European, just about everything around here. All right, so that way is the famous historic center, Casco Antiguo, one of the best in Americas, or that city that we first showed was burned down. This was constructed and then it also went into ruins in the 20th century and it's since been really remodeled. It is very beautiful, but we're not going to go visit there. We're going to the barrio. Aquí por Santana y Chorrillo con una camarita no hay problema. Mira, tienes que tener cuidado. Sí? Tienes que tener cuidado porque... Es muy movida. Es un poco peligroso. Pero donde? Santa Ana o el Chorrillo? El Chorrillo y Santa Ana, los dos. Vale. That guy was cool, just a 24-year-old chap working as the police. I mean, it's a way to get out of the hood, perhaps. And maybe it's not the best paid job, but it's definitely, I would say, respected. And um, you're able to see a different world once you get into a place where there's tourists. Because, yeah, in these barrios around here, people live a reality where they really believe that what they see is the world, is their world. and. That's why, like we learned on the videos in LA with Luis there, the Mexican uh, former gangbanger, the veterano, well, he used to think that East LA was everything until he realized what else is out there. It's kind of similar everywhere you go in the world. You guys remember the Panama Papers in 2016? Check out these guys on a motorcycle. <laughs> the police are actually friendly here. The Panama Papers expose all these illegal businesses from around the world that come here obviously avoiding taxes so avoiding taxes or paying low taxes isn't illegal but evading taxes is so yeah that was a german paper company that did that usually this place is like booming but i think people are at work right now maybe at like three or four in the afternoon it'll get quieter it'll get crazier i remember coming here in 2017 2018 exploring the city thinking wow this is like the miami the infrastructure is, is the closest thing there is to an American city. But in this part, this is like how the locals live. 
not in the high rises, the condos that the foreigners own, the bankers, lawyers, etc. No, Spider-Man. Que lo que? Hey, todo bien. Todo bien. Usted vende este granizo. Sí. Eres el Sp Spiderman del barrio. Eh, correcto, correcto, exacto. ¿Dónde nació esto? Para animar a los niños, la gente, claro. hacer algo divertido. Vale, ¿qué precio oh, tiene un granizo? Un dólar. Tengo de un dólar y de dos dólares. Un dólar para mi señor. Oh, okay. el, el de un dólar. Ofi. <risa> Qué sopla. Mira, esto es el mejor vendedor de la calle. Es Spider-Man. Oh, okay. Spider-Man, ¿eh? No se mete con Spider-Man. <risa> Yo soy venezolano, panameño. Ah, qué bueno, tío. Soy venezolano, pero tengo mi cédula panameña. Claro, nos llevas aquí muchos años. Sí, sí, ya llevo. Oh, sí. El balboa, ya sabe la moneda acá. Ajá. Ya, gracias, compi. Ya está dolarizado. Vale, gracias, papá. Ya sé, aventurero, Elliot. En español. En español. Ya buscaré, voy a buscar. Let's give it a go. Saludos, después, hermano. Show me your tela. Enséñame yeah. tu tela. La tela. <laughs> <laughs> qué bueno. Mm. Wow. The key for me that makes these things good is um, the decondensed leche desconsada. No es pay de rapa. Está bien, bien antiguo. Ajá. Pero también se ve un poco árabe. It looks, it looks a little bit Arabic, like Moroccan, Andalusian. Anyways, es muy curioso. Sí, esta calle es muy curiosa. Okay. Wow. Look at all these watches. I wonder if they're stolen. Maybe. Because oftentimes, let's see, let's give you an example in Spain, what happens with stolen goods. Stolen goods, people steal in Barcelona, they steal your phone. Que lo que? Todo bien. Todo bien fino. Todo fino. They steal your phones or jewelry, and then people track their phones back to Morocco. I don't know what the black market is like here, but it could be, yeah, someone just sold them, or perhaps they're stolen goods. Yeah, this is definitely European architecture here. Check that out. All right, let's go down one of these brand new streets. See if there's any things we can find. Hello. Whoa. We can find a anime <laughs> or like a virtual reality Chinese woman. Nice. I'm liking this area. I swear I was walking down here the other day and it was just full of crazy Probably like a hundred security men. Hello. Hola. Hello. And like, uh, like the red light district. But it's pretty quiet right now. <laughs> this reminds me of Tres Mil Viviendas in Sevilla. Remember we did that video in Sevilla? All the government subsidized apartments look just like this right here. I wonder if during the 90s after Noriega, some sort of government investment made these buildings. It looks like it. Estoy bailando y todo, mi banda toca rock y feliz. Déjame lo dice ahorita en la vida. Sí. Ponte para que te ves ahorita y me compro una buena, una bebida. Toma. Ya lo pique. Ahora dame la galleta que me hayas pagado y dame la plata que te dio también. No, si voy. Quiero mi... Ya me lo dijiste, ya no quiero tu madera, pie, pues. Vos vete a los tíos. ¿Ustedes son amigos? Sí, sí, a los colocos que estaba bien. Sí. Yeah, I f***ed up right now. Ajá. Le mataron al papá cuando tenía siete años a tiro con él sí. y a la mamá murió cuando tenía nueve años también muerta a tiro. Qué duro. Y quedó así solo. Un poco, él te le... entiende todavía porque no está loco ni vale, nada. Vale, pero le tienes cariño. ¿Cómo no? Si yo lo coloqué el peladito porque está así, lo voy a ignorar. Ustedes jugaban juntos de niño. Entonces. Claro, yo iba a ver que el que está así, que no me hable, que no, no, no. Ah. Yo no hablo en eso. Qué bueno. Quedó así, yo sé por qué quedó así. Por la muerte del papá y la muerte de la mamá. Yo sé. Eh, y, ¿Y por qué le dispararon a, al papá? Problema de droga, no sé de qué era, pero... Entonces, la ciudad de Panamá o esta zona, ¿qué tal en general? Bien duro, tranquilito, familiar, mucho movimiento. Todo es familiar, todo es buen movimiento, pero lo que diría en el país son la corrupción y la porquería. ¿De los eh, políticos? Sí, todo, del presidente para abajo, todos son unas perras cochinas. No da la plaza de trabajo en la alcaldía, en la asamblea, no lo da ni trabajo. Bueno. No va a vivir. Pero ya mismo está hablando de la corrupción. ¿Qué era lo que estaba pasando? No era la corrupción. Yo estoy que no den trabajo, no que no. Oh, you speak English as well. Everywhere, man. How do, are you... I'm a bilingual. I speak all kind of different English. I speak American English, Jamaican English. Are you... Where were you born? 
in Panama. And you learn uh, English from your family? Yeah, because my, my grandparents are from Barbados and Jamaica. And they came here to work on the canal? The canal, and that's all we used to the black people in from Colón. Uh -huh. We speak English. Hell yeah. That's the reason why. So do you feel more connected to your culture in Barbados? and the Caribbean than the Panamanian culture? No, I connected with the Panamanian culture because I've never been to Barbados. I'm sure. I've been to the United States, yes. Really? But not to Barbados, not to me. Where, where did you live in the United States? New York, California, Atlanta, Georgia, Connecticut. I've been all over. And what was your favorite place to live? In Connecticut. Your work? No, really, why? That's where my kids are born. All right, you have kids in Connecticut or United States then? Yeah. They come here to see you? No. no. Why not? Bueno, yeah, ya no tienes tiempo de estar. Bueno, hermano, pero what are you doing right now? Right now, working in a Jewish store. Oh, but you're on break? Yeah. Okay, so I'm you're waiting for your break. food. Yeah, I'm right. getting my lunch to go back to work. Hell yeah. I so work in a Jewish store, I'm a, I'm a black and I'm on that side. And you so you sell jewelry? Yeah. And and who sells you the jewelry? No, no. That the people over the level. I'm a worker. Okay, you're an employee. Yeah. You're All speaking right. you're, you're speaking real, bro. Alright. You're real talk, no, real talk. Nice Alright, bro, take care. Yeah. God bless. Alright All right, guys, that was crazy. Um he knew that guy that appeared to be living on the street. He knew him. And he said that his father was shot when he was seven years old and his mom died from something, but like, that's that can go on here. I mean, holy shit. Holy shit. Hola. Estamos bien? Tío, una pregunta. ¿Qué es, qué es la necesidad de tener metralleta? Para tener una mano larga. Prevención, más o menos. Qué bueno. Somos un binomio. Ajá. ¿Y ustedes son militares o policía? Policía. Policía. Bueno, estoy dando un pasito. Gracias. Hasta luego. <laughs> Shit. That guy was just holding up the machine gun. Wow. So we're just getting a little preview. It's getting warmed up here. Oh my God. That guy from New York was cool. You know what? Well, from Barbados. He's from here actually, but he speaks English as you guys heard. I was going to ask him if he wanted to go around and, and you know, he was the, the first character, the true character that I met today. He probably had a lot of stories, man. I keep asking people because my contacts not responding to me. How do I get into that neighborhood? Um, and everyone's saying don't go. And when they say that in Latin America, I think they really mean it. In Spain, it's like, nah, there's not truly a super, super dangerous place in Spain where there's hitman and sicarios. But down here, yeah, there's a lot of sicarios all throughout Latin America. And basically, they're just fighting for territory. One street's good, the other street's controlled by another one, and then another street's good, and then the other one's controlled by another one. So basically what the taxi driver told me is that they follow you, they have a problem with you until you leave the neighborhood, and then they do their hit. Doesn't really happen downtown, but I guess it could. The thing is, is they don't wanna make the barrio hot. They don't wanna calentar the barrio. Car went down and it Break it. Is this common here or just never? No, that he, he, he have merchandise. Uh huh. He was and working. He was yes, working. He was working. But I mean, like this type of stuff. Does it happen a lot in Panama City or just as like? Just just a while ago. Okay. So are you also from Barbados or Jamaica or? No, I'm from right here. So how did you learn English? Huh? How did you learn English? I learned it in Colón. In Colón. In the park. Patois. In the park with the homies. Yes, yes, yes. Hell yeah. Are you working around here? What are you up to no, today? No, I, I, I work in the, in the park. I just keep here. Uh -huh. Sure, sure, sure. Yes. What's your name? Sinclair. Sorry? Sinclair. Uh, that's a S French name. S-I-N-C-L-E-I-R. That's a French name, right? Right. So you have descendants from France or French influence as well. Right, right. Crazy man. This okay. city is so diverse. That's right. That's right, bro. Okay. Well, I guess another day in Panama City. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so we got the news here. They're like, oh my God, breaking news. Breaking news, there's a leak in the streets. Let's do some clickbait to get some views on the television. 350 years since the foundation of this part of the old city. Because yeah, the first city burned down. They reconstructed here where it was safer. And it still exists to this day and it's really well preserved. All throughout Panama City, you see statues of the li liberators. That's why I thought it was uh, interesting to see the Spanish conquistador statue earlier. Because um, in Latin America, a lot of the discourse, the political discourse and education is against the Spanish. 
but you cannot deny the Spanish influence in a place like Panama City. Eso es un barrio turístico? Sí, más o menos. Do you speak English? Yeah, I speak oh, English. Oh, perfect. How much language do you want to speak? English. I prefer English. All right. Well, I was a seaman for 30 years. I go all the continent of the world, in Africa, China, India, Europe, Asia. I was working for my young. And so what was your favorite continent to visit? Well, uh, India and Indonesia. I like it plenty. It's beautiful woman and you have a good time. How does your life compare to back then? Also, like when you were working, oh, you were on the ships, now oh, you're it's a, doing it's something a, different. Well, now it's hell. First was glory and now it's hell. Why, why is that? Because first time I used to get good work, good money. Sure. Go to port, go on plane. Sure. I take more than 35 planes in my life. Sure. In Africa, I'm in India, China, Europe, I'm in Asia, uh -huh. North Korea. Can I ask you how much money you were able to make like monthly? Well, sometimes thirteen thousand dollars. In the in the nineties or the eighties? Yeah, in the nineties. Uh huh. Eighties and nineties. Ah, Mr. Black, really? See, now it's like hell. Why do you say now it's like I'm hell? I'm a big man now, and you know. Time passed, I have 71 years. Sure. I started navigating when I was 22, 22 years. Uh huh. It's a lot of years ago. You know, and life changed now. In Panama, for people who are pensionado or in your situation, yeah. what's that situation? I have situation? a little pension, it's very little. Because sure. after I come off the ship, I work as security, get some a little pension. Whatever, it's whatever job, it, yeah. It I make my 150 a month and just pay my, my phone and my my food sure you know I, I do this to get my food you know? yeah and family uh, do you live with family well, right now all my family died right now I only have one daughter and she's in Cologne Cologne what's your name Mario Mario so you have a Spanish name what's your background your ancestry Mario Antonio Gardner oh yeah, yeah. they came in the construction of the canal. which is like what everyone in this area did right yeah, exactly. The majority of person came from the construction of the canal. Uh -huh. They have the children, the children. Sure. When school, they graduate, so now they're part of the public. Did you work with Americans, like an engineers? No, I work in an American tugboat for seven years as a cook. His okay. name is Fairwind and Enterprise. It's a, I think the company is in Louisiana. Uh -huh. It's a Delmar, Delmar, that's the company. Sure. Delmar Tugman Barge. Uh -huh. I worked there seven years. And what was it like working with Americans? Oh man, that was beautiful, man. Good pay, good food, your condition. I worked, my last work was an American tug. Uh -huh. With thousand horsepower. Yeah. Imagine, a big tug. Chorrillo burnt down and so there was a lot of gang activity that came exactly. in because they left weapons. Everybody stealing, robbing, trying to survive. Yeah. All right, brother. Thank you for talking to me. Can I help you? Okay, man, I'm grateful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my friend. All right, God bless you. God bless you too, my friend. Hey, bro, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> You're working today, right? No, no work. No? No, not, not for me, no work. I, I was just speaking with your friend here and... Ah, uh, my friend? Yes, yeah, it's my friend. My money, my, my children, my... Food. Uh huh. Right? For today. Hey, nothing. Nothing. So you, you go in the morning, you go look for work. Well, yes. Hey, nothing, no money, nothing. Hey, look. One dollar. Uh huh. Well, my, 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 five, five, five child. You have five children? Yes. Tienes cinco hijos. Cinco hijos, tengo, y no digo nada. Usted es panameño. Panameño, sí, panameño. Era una. Era un gobierno de militares. Como mano dura. Mano dura. Había menos. Menos maleante y había más respeto. Ahora con la invasión que hubo, mucha arma ha quedado suelta por ahí. Es que. Take care, bro. All right. All right. See you later. Thank you, man. All right. Enjoy your food. You can see that in this area, so many wealthy people come to Panama City. So many wealthy tourists, and yet we have abject poverty in some of these streets here. That I gotta find a contact to be able to see. Hopefully, we can still see that. Man, but there's not many places in Latin America that have this much influence, European influence, well intact. There's only a few ones. Cartagena, Colombia, maybe Veracruz, Mexico, Santo Domingo, Havana, but Havana's in ruins. After that power vacuum of the invasion, right? 
this was all in runes. This was all in runes, I've been told. And little by little, they've been making it better. That's where all the tourists go, and this is where the locals live. <laughs> Hola. Football, football callejero. Me amo Elliot. Yo soy un YouTuber de Estados Unidos. Football callejero. Pitcher. Oh, let's go, let's go. First, ah, first base. Estamos bien. Me llamo Elliot. Yo soy un YouTuber de Estados Unidos. Mira, vamos a llevar acá y le compro una soda grande y galleta. ¿Cuándo la? ¿Para quién? Para todos. Para todos, pero no, no estoy forrado. No, <ríe> no estoy rico. No, nada más. No. 5 o 10 dólares vale ahí una soda grande. Algo yo no tengo, yo no traigo efectivo, me explico. Ya, ya, ya. Bueno, bueno, les dejo en paz, ¿vale? Hasta luego. <ríe> All right, guys. Chao. Suerte, bro. Suerte. They wanted me to buy the whole group something there. And you know, in reality, I would, but I don't want to take out my cash. If you guys can imagine. So I got a taxi driver, Uber driver, um, to bring me into some of the areas to see where to go and where not to go. But I'm gonna go to like the local government building to see if someone can help me out there. As you can tell, just uh, one street changes from the other. So out there, I was told do not go that way, whatever you do. But I came here to the firemen to talk with them. My contact didn't get back to me, so we're kind of in the heart of the hood right now, but like if I go that way, mission impossible. So we're gonna take a look at uh, the bomberos. Okay, all right guys, we're gonna get a tour with the firemen. Esto es como el recinto seguro. <laughs> wow. Oh, permiso. Hay alguien aquí o una persona del barrio que conoces que me podría llevar por algunos rinconcitos. No las calles calientes, sino... No, no, no. Eh, tendrías que, que encontrarte a alguien de repente... Eh... Una persona respetable del barrio, un guía, pero... Ajá. Si te vas a lo que es el mismo casco antiguo, Ajá. hay guías. Sí. Señor, gracias. Mucho gusto. Cuidado right. bendiciones. Chao. <laughs> All right, guys, we're with the firemen. Gracias por vuestro la labor. Hasta luego. This is a fireman's office in Panama. <laughs> the firemen here are saying, yeah, don't go that way. Don't go that way. Bueno, señor. Eh, una pregunta. ¿Me puedes llevar un poco por el barrio para conocer eh, qué precio tiene? Depende del tiempo, si quiere. Como 10 minutos. Eh, es muy barato, ¿eh? Yo quiero conocer donde había como este, donde el cuartel de Noriego estaba. Ok, te voy a decir porque sí. yo trabajé con el general Noriega. ¿En serio? Sí. <risa> uh. hey. Oh my God. Yo trabajé en la fuerza de defensa. ¿Y usted habla inglés? No. Bueno, no pasa nada. ¿Y esta zona aquí, este, pues qué tal? Este es Patio Pinel. Ajá. Ah, hay más o menos peligrosa. Sí, pero yo veo mucha gente trabajando, sí, pues sí, sí, veo sí, familias. Sí. Hay mucha familia trabajadora aquí. ¿Y cómo era trabajar para Noriega? Muy bien, perfecto. No, no, no tuvimos problemas. Entonces, usted es muy patriota. Sí. Qué bueno. Uh -huh. Me gusta que los panameños sean patriotas, uh -huh. la verdad. Sí. Populoso barrio del Chorrillo. El Chorrillo, estamos en el Chorrillo activo. Uh -huh. Activo el papo. Populoso barrio del Chorrillo y era el cuartel central. Ah, y todos estos quemaron. Sí, todo esto fue quemado por, lo, por la invasión, por lo, la bomba de los gringos. Todos esos son nuevos. De aquí, Ajá. de aquí para allá. Ajá. Hasta acá al frente. Ya veo. Acá al frente quedaba el antiguo G2. Aquí, G2. Aquí todo, todo era el cuartel central. Vale. La comandancia. Claro. La comandancia general. Este es el edificio de piedra. Famoso porque aquí convivió el famoso boxeador panameño Roberto Mano de Piedra Durán. Y todo esto por aquí en el cuartel central. Wow, mira. Todo esto. We're in the heart. Estamos en el corazón del barrio. There's lots of families, but again, I'm a lost gringo here. <laughs> Yo sería un gringo perdido acá, pero yeah, it's very, muy curioso. Y yo caminando, yo caminando por aquí solito con la camarita. Mm -mm. No te lo recomiendo. Imposible. Mira, es que yo soy sincero, Panamá sí. es mi país. Claro. Pero hay gente buena y hay gente mala. Claro. ¿Entiendes? Entonces por aquí de verdad que te ven con la cámara por ahí, te ven solo y muchos mozalbetes como llamamos nosotros, 
mozabetes son maleantes sí, o sí, yo no de maleante y maleantes ajá uh -huh. y entonces aquí pasan tiroteos sí, aquí. de vez en cuando de vez en cuando, o cuando sí. o... so in this building that's where all the arms the weapons were seized otro grupo la tenían wow this is a uh, duro duro eh, queda como rencor con, contra lo que hicieron los Estados Unidos, o sea, gente... Algunas partes sí, otras no, exacto. Uh -huh. Nadie está contento, otros están contentos, ¿no? Así que, bueno. Sí. Uh -huh. eh, ¿Cuánto te debo? Ay, no sé cuánto me quieras dar. Eh, o sea, no tienes eh, el, el metro. No, no, aquí no se usa el taxímetro. Pues, ¿está bien 5 dólares o, o cuénteme? Se, uh -huh. Sea honesto. Son 30, pero te voy a cobrar 20. ¿20? 20, sí. Te puedo dar 15. Dame los 15, pues. Okay. Dame los 15, pues. Okay. Dame los 15. Pues. ¿Qué, ¿Qué más vas a recordar de, del tiempo con Noriega y tu trabajo y, y el barrio bueno, tuyo? Recuerdo que había más respeto. Uh -huh. Más respeto, menos delincuencia. Uh -huh. verdad, ahora habla la verdad, menos delincuencia. Uh -huh. El uniformado se respetaba. Uh -huh se le daba el valor al uniformado. Uh -huh. Hablaba de que era un régimen, pero había más seguridad que ahora. Bueno, señor, gracias. A ti. Bueno, dale. Right. Okay. Ah. Uf. Man, I just got ripped off. Habla speak Spanish. Sí. Vamos, yo mismo yo soy, yo nací aquí, vivo aquí. Confianza. Ah, vale. Yeah, para la presidencia ah, también. Vamos. No, pero el casco ya conozco. ¿Qué quiere conocer entonces? No, yo, Chorrillo, Andrés Durán, todo esto lo puedo llevar. Pues sí, yo, por eso le digo, el pollo van de usted quiera, Rubén Blake. Ya conozco todo. ¿Qué quiere conocer? Pues ya estoy bien, ya, ya estoy bien. Él me dijo que usted quería conocer algún tour. ¿Un tourcito quiere? Me voy, gracias, señor. Pues un tourcito ahí, algo para ganar más para comer. <risa> Hombre, ya, ya he regalado mucho dinero hoy. Pero, ¿tú algo para comer? Oh, there was my scam. I got scammed, but that's all right, you know what? That taxi drive was probably worth $5. $30, but I can give it to you for $20. I said $15, which is still high. But it's okay, you guys. Sometimes you just gotta let go. I'm seriously lucky and privileged to be able to, to do this type of content. And so I'm very grateful. Also, that last guy there, bad vibes. Not the taxi driver, but his friend there. <laughs> bad, bad, bad vibes. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That will be okay. All right. Thank you. How do you know English? Um, I learned English in Houston, Texas University. I traveled when I was younger. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Okay. And my and mother in Houston. Why don't you still live in the United States? Uh, I just travel as a vacation. Uh -huh. say. No. You were sleeping at the park? Yeah, I was sleeping at the park um, last night. And actually, you are supposed not to stay in the park. So they, don't. So they don't treat homeless people well here? No, actually. So they actually gave me like eight bottles of water to drink it. So I puked. Really? Yeah. They, they, they forced you? Yes. The they police? Forced. Yes. Yes. The SPI. It's called SPI. Okay. It's the one like... So they pepper sprayed your hand? Yeah, actually. Yeah. It's a little bit like sword. Yeah, I see it's very different than your that, your left hand. Yeah, on my other hand. They literally spray pepper spray. Yeah, on my hand. And they said that they want me to throw it on my face myself. They uh -huh. want me to put it on my face. I didn't do it, so they actually hit me with their... Um, batons. Yes. They actually hit me with their batons. I had... Oh, I was living in an apartment I was renting, but I have a, an operation. Yeah, I have an, an infection entering in your, org uh, in your um, organs. Yeah, in your in digestive system. Correct. Yeah. Digest then, then they opened me twice in a one year. All the way down, all till, you know, all the way down. And they did a bad job, you know, at the hospital. Actually, I didn't have like my family support since that time because here, maybe the culture is a little bit different. Here, as soon as you can have 18 years old, your family just like, well, that's, you're on your own. That's here. like the United States. Basically, yeah, but here, I mean, maybe there your father might be telling you, hey, you need help, I'll help you, but here, sure. no. My father, I actually, I do not see him since like two years ago. Okay. I'll try to talk to him, you know, I answer. 
since I'm in this situation, my family actually, you know, went a little bit away. Far away. They, 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 yes, they, they, dis they, they distanced themselves from you. Uh, I didn't have like $18,000 to pay the first one. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I try to pay it somehow. So I uh, actually, after the operation, I have to stop working for six months at least. And here, the job do not give you any type of uh, uh, sick pay. 15 to 20 days per year after I lost the apartment that I was renting, I lost my car. I lost almost everything. Yeah. I've met Americans who have been in similar situations, but usually, unfortunately, they have a problem with drugs or alcohol. I do not have an alcohol problem. You don't I, look like an alcoholic, you look no, healthy. No. Thank you, appreciate it. Yeah. Actually, I stopped drinking alcohol like at 25 years old, more uh -huh. than 10 years ago. I'm still doing the basics, like the clothes, you know, get some nice things to go to another place that we are uh -huh. some days we don't even have a bread sure we just have coffee sure and that's you can get stabbed by any crazy guy out there right stabbed you know with a knife yeah like get stabbed so, by last night a girl showed me her hand a guy from the street robbed her and she's from the street too i mean sure. that's so crazy i mean you can get drugged by someone on the street and you can get really bad things in the street sure. here in panama at night you better go so at night, this area around here is really dangerous. On this same street, on the night, I saw once in front of me, man, like a five meter in front of me, three guys just grab one man and he, they throw him on the floor and you know, like choke him and they just took everything out of him. Sure. Right in front of me, man. And what I did, just look away. What yeah. Man, yeah. I cannot help that guy. I think when things happen here in Latin America, when they see crime or sicarios or whatever, they just they just they, they're like, I'm not gonna, I'm not a chivato. I'm not gonna tell the police. I'm not gonna tell anyone. Like that's the way you protect yourself. So of course, yes. If you're in Panama, the way to protect yourself is just be quiet. Be quiet and mind your own business. Yes. Yeah. Mind your own business. That's how sure. it works here. Yesterday, I, uh, I went to an interview. However, they realize the fact that I'm living basically on the street though yeah they, they judged you yes and they didn't yeah. give me the opportunity i feel like maybe united states or europe is a little more um receptive or open-minded with with this type of situation where in latin america para quien para la suyo no that's true that's everyone true. everyone fights for themselves like it's a cold-hearted place sometimes sometimes so do you have a social media or a way to contact you if someone sees this video actually no however the place where i stay at night is behind a church it's called my home my home uh -huh. in spanish is mi hogar mi, mi hogar, mi hogar yeah. okay i can I, I can show you if you want though i gotta get going i got other people to meet up with um okay. you caught me at the right moment but okay. i was in uh, on my way to so somewhere you're, else you're staying up there no no i'm in oh. panama viejo oh, you're really far yeah i'm far yeah they tease you with the taser yeah they did that to me I, no I, it happens here almost every day that you have to see and talk with people all right, bro. That's hey, why I do the street interviews. Thank you, bro. All right. See, see you. you later. Bye. Que Dios te bendiga. Amen. All right. Didn't expect that, but when you go on the streets, that's the kind of stuff you uh, learn. All right. <laughs> Comandante. <Yeah>. Comandante. <laughs> do you remember when the American soldiers were here? Yeah. How was that, the, the 89 invasion? Actually, before the invasion, everything was nice. The worst thing they could do is to let the American go. They wanted Panama to be like Puerto Rico. We have to be like Puerto Rico, but the Panamanian then decided to say they didn't want that. They say no, and so we end up. So no. there's people here who are grateful for what the Americans did here. Like uh -huh. the invasion, innocent people died, but like. Yeah, yeah. But they have to do it. We have a crazy um, general controlling the country, Noriega. Man, we don't got no medication or nothing, and he got a building like that. With all the medication in this fire, you don't want to give nobody no medication. So we were getting hit all over. So the American came in and it make it better. Who don't mess it up is who we got here. So are diputados, uh -huh. legisladores, yeah. and those people in New York, they rob all the money from the country. So Panos had year after year after year of corruption, of, of corrupt. Yeah, we're corrupt government. That's it. And what do you think about the new president that's just got oh, here? Oh, let us see what our tool can do. We, we, can't, our, we can't say anything yet. We don't know. I know. We don't know. That's why we got to wait and see what he's going to do. Because a new major we got, look at the bullshit he came and put up. He put up this house. This thing today. Prohibited? What's bon bonería? Bonería is this thing that we have here selling those clothes. Ah, 
You mean yeah. you mean the the stands, people yeah. selling things? He don't want to see that anymore. He wants to shut that down, man. Yeah. That's Latin America. Yeah, but what? He gonna give us any job? We gonna be employed? Uh huh. He don't say nothing. He say fifteen days. He don't want to see nobody in this street. Yeah. What we gonna do? You think we gonna just give up like that? No. Hell no. We going to war. We got kids to feed. Sure. You know you can't just come. If you come and tell us, oh, we don't want that here. Oh, I got this job for you. You gonna be employed? You gonna be employed in this place here, here? All right. Yeah. We got all to feed our family, pay rent, pay light, pay water. So, do you ever feel fear about speaking out about the governments like that? Here? I don't fear about nothing. Anyone I fear about is God. Yeah. That's it. I don't care about none of them. I'm not speaking no lie. I'm speaking the truth. Yeah. That's it. You're, you're, you're a God-fearing man. That's it. That's the only one I fear. Sure. No man. Yeah. Okay? All right. Make up with God before they fire me from my job. Oh, sh bro. <laughs> Take care, homie. All right, man. <laughs> Best guy of the day, man. That was hilarious. I like that guy. This area also has a Chinese hood. Barrio Chino. Los policías son muy corruptos en Panamá. Ajá, como, o sea, dame un ejemplo. peligroso. Están buscando dinero y ve a quién le pegan, a quién le meten preso. Y los policías son aquí, son bien igual. Ellos son abusadores, con los turistas también, pero con los pananos, nosotros también tenemos que tener cuidado de los policías porque ellos andan viendo a quién le hacen daño. Ajá. Sí, Aquí sí. hay mucha corrupción en Panamá. Vale. El gobierno el que acaba de pasar nos robó demasiado el PRD, se robó miles de millones de dólares mientras la policía les hacía el trabajo sucio. Entonces vivimos en un sistema de corrupción aquí en Panamá. Este es un barrio chino, aquí, está, aquí están los chinos. Los chinos aquí en Panamá, ellos no pagan impuestos. La mayoría no, no pagan impuestos, ellos evaden los impuestos. Entonces, a favor que todos los comerciantes paguen sus impuestos como lo tienen que pagar. Upon trying to go down one of those alleyways to see more what it's like, it was probably the filthiest place I've ever seen. So I was like, yeah, man, I'm gagging just by being near it. So I turned around and that guy popped up. <laughs> So that's a sentiment. We, a lot of people here are saying there's a lot of corruption and, and the police are corrupt. But that's kind of like a universal rule when you're traveling. Don't look for drugs in trouble and you won't find it. So there's a fine line with these YouTube videos of, as we can see here, the Chinese area. There's a fine line of getting into trouble, getting off the track, risking my life, or having a limit, right? And today we've seen that where I was like, man, I just knew the vibe. I needed a taxi in that hood. And there was tons of families around there, but you just never know, you know? When you're out in the street, you're exposed to dangers and nobody's gonna come rescue. Those firemen there, they were friendly, but they weren't about to help me go through the neighborhood at all. So by all those people talking, am I exposing corruption? I don't think so. Those guys obviously aren't scared to speak out, I think. They just want to have a voice or be heard. There's such a divide in Latin America in the cities, we think it might be bad in the United States. But like here, everywhere you go in Latin America, it's rich versus extremely poor. And that's why the word in Spanish is called necesidad. That's why things exist like narco trafficking, institution. That's why politicians became corrupt. I mean, Noriega was a CIA informant and then he converted into a heavy, hardcore drug trafficker working with you know who, Pablo Escobar, because we're at that isthmus point between Colombia heading north. So this became a narco state for that time until the Americans took control. And here we have the skyline, Panama flag, Pacific Ocean. It's a cool city, but what we see here in the old town is a facade. What we see back there, where we went today, is the reality. And what we see here is a tax haven and money laundering paradise. Wow. Are we in Southern California or Miami? The quién es? Mayer. It's yours? No, Mayer, Mayer. Mayer. Alcalde. No, new oh, alcalde. Oh, the, the alcalde. El, el, el joven. El joven. New alcalde. Hey, where is he? He's here. Yeah. Oh. You guys are gonna believe this, man. This is the mayor of Panama City, bro. This is one of three cyber trucks in all of Latin America. I noticed you speak wonderful English. Did you live in the United States or did you study at international school here? My mom's Jamaican. Your mom's Jamaican. So can you explain to me uh, as mayor, like, or like, what are some goals you have? So we basically just, first thing we got to do is um, get it in order. Like everything is a disaster. People are selling on the streets without permits. 
Um, so public spaces are being misused and abused. Uh -huh. And there's no law and order. So we got to do that. The second thing is trash. We've got a huge trash problem. Unfortunately, unlike any other municipality in the world or in the country, the, the trash is not part of our responsibility. Right. It is assigned to central government. Sure. So we kind of like have to like tread lightly in how can we help the government, but not, you know, get involved in their process because it's very political. Sure. They want to own it. But the minute, because it's a new government, we'll give them a chance. Let's say six months from now, the city looks the same, then I'm going to be, ha I'm going to have to be obligated to get political about it and get involved. Sure. And when you shine, other people feel overshadowed. That's uh -huh. a political problem, sure. but we're willing to, you know, to take it on as long as the city looks nice. How has immigration here from Venezuela, from the Darien, etc., how has that changed like recently with the new president? So basically the route is South America to the US, right? And the main bottleneck is actually Panama, mm -hmm. the in. And there's um, a province called Darien, which is in the, it's connected to Colombia. They are coming through Colombia into the Darien Gap. And that's basically the problem. If, if we don't put law and order in immigration, it's gonna be transferred into the US. So the current administration, the new administration is now working hand in hand with the US government. Sure. Because it is actually more reasonable and cheaper for the US to help out down here than to put an entire border wall in the US, which is doing, but but with this immigration crisis that we have from South America, you want to nip it in the bud in the in the of, of most narrow concentration, which uh, is Panama. Right. It's yeah. like a little bottleneck. Right. Um, so you, this is why Panama strategically is a good place to enact an immigration reform. All right, man. I know you got to get working. So thank nice you. To meet you, man. My name's Elliot. Adventure Elliot on YouTube. Uh, what a crazy day. We started in Chorrillo. Oh, sorry. We started in Panama Video telling the Spanish history. Cool. Went to Casco Antiguo and El Chorrillo. Talk about the American invasion yeah. and the day the day to day life there with the people, and then we ended up here. I'm pretty dumbfounded, but uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm the only um, influencer mayor in the world. No, no, exactly. That's what this I girl I saw as yesterday. An influencer, um, and then I decided, you know, I, I do a lot of social work, good you know, good deeds and stuff like that. I love getting involved, fixing streets, fixing potholes, helping people out. Sure. And I decided the way to scale that. In a country like this, honestly, because you're not in the U.S., you don't get the sponsorship that you can get in yeah. the U.S. Is getting into government. So I got involved. And so Panama and Latin America. What defines Panama, Panama City? But like this is a this is a good country. I see objectively speaking, compared to some other countries in Latin America. You guys should be proud of yourselves. Listen, Panama is Panama is capitalist democracy. It's center right, and it is founded in American culture a sure. lot of a lot of the influence in Panama is from the American uh, presence in Panama a lot of it is still around so it's part of the culture and it's I would say America is our most strategic ally we share a lot of culture um, dem democratic um, and and capitalist goals sure so you know it's like a little beacon of democracy and and capitalism in a, in a in a region of the world that is always changing you sometimes have an ultra right and an ultra left and panama is always balanced so thank god we got this in, in latin america and we're also one of the smallest countries in latin america this is where all the influencers come <laughs> oh yeah check this out this is a better view well well we walk great success I like Panama. You know what really caught my attention today was that a lot of people spoke English. Um, I think it's unique to see a place that has all this ethnic background, a place that in general is a very safe city, especially for Latin America. I really hope that the city has a bright future with this new mayor. He was a really nice guy and it's not often you see a young mayor that captivates the whole city like that by using social media. That is the future of politics. This is Trump Tower, or it was Trump Tower, called the Giant Vagina, as you saw. It's now the Marriott, and apparently there was some scandal, like, with tax evasion. I don't really know where Ivanka Trump lied and said that they sold 90% of the units when that was the truth, but this is definitely an interesting place. As you can see, that's where we went earlier, that causeway, that, and the Panamanian rainforest and jungle. 
a place that's certainly unique. Um, some call it the Little Miami. I would say it has a long way to go, but what is unique about it is it does offer opportunities for a lot of immigrants. It's a stressful city at the same time, but it's probably among the safest places in all of Latin America. Um, and it's just geographically unique and I'm gonna come back. There's more videos to record here. That would be something if we get an opportunity to record with the mayor one day about the politics and the rich areas, right? This is predominantly a Jewish area. So I'll see you guys from a place where they don't speak a lot of English next. Or I highly, I highly doubt that we'll find people who speak English in the hoods where we're going next. Saying goodbye from Panama City, hasta luego.